Okay, so what a reason my droid decided at some point during this whole thing just to start counting backwards from a minute. <laughs> Got really hot and didn't do anymore. Anyway, I'm done with this and now I'm going to discuss what the cons are of Grub 2, what goes wrong with Grub 2. So Grub 2, no doubt, or, uh, I'm pretty sure is going to be in this Mandarina 10-2 and didn't ask me anything about my partitions, it just did its thing. And on this uh, computer I have Windows 7, I have Ubuntu, I have Linux Mint, I have OpenSUSE, I have Haiku, I have Fedora, I have Mandriva, and I have Slackware. Got all those. And let's just see if this thing's Grub2 is able to handle it. It tries, we'll see how it goes. And we'll also see whether a fresh install of Mandriva, uh, it's able to actually go in there and actually present a graphical user interface environment for me, either GDM or KDM, and what my initial impressions are from it. So now this is all I have. I have, uh, let's see, I got Mandriva, I got Windows, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and that's it. So. I just lost the contents of, I can't get to Ubuntu, can't get to Linux Mint, and I can't get to Slackware, unless I go into Fedora and handle it that way. But I'm going to go into Mandarin to see what it does, what it's like, etc., etc. I'm not, not all is lost. The good news is that I have that Fedora entry, and so I'll be able to go into Fedora and <coughs> go back into Grub1 and everything will be back to normal once I simply identify what the entry should look like for for uh, for this new Mandriva 10 chip. Okay, so I do have a graphical user interface, I guess, okay. I want me to register. <coughs> and I've already provided my username, didn't fill that in. Oh, I don't want to create an account, I'm just going to decline that. I'm done, so let's just go in here, for God's sakes. Now this, this looks like KDM. You know, the artwork's cool, you know, the artwork's okay, it's, it's not, but, it, but that's the bonus, it's not. It's not, you know, not the desire, if all he gets artwork, well that's what photographs are for. <laughs> pictures. <laughs> so anyway, here I am. Let's see if it's got it's got the wobbly windows on by default. No, but it's got fading windows. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? I'm not even sure, where's the control center? Where's the Mandarin control center? I right click on this, get something. Activity settings. Cancel on that, let's see. Alrighty. Well, I don't see any features for for CompUs. I don't want to mess with it right now. This is pretty much a KDE desktop with the Mandariva look. And we even have Firefox 4 here. Okay, I've clicked on this three times. Let's see what it does. What do I got? 
3.6. I could upgrade to power pack, but really it doesn't. Do, I've bought that before, and there's not much it really does for you. Okay, so I'm going to restart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Fedora, and I'm just going to show you guys right now what I do to get these damn things working right and boot everything I want now. I should be able to mount my Fedora partition and uh, Mandriva partition from Fedora and take a look at what entries that are there. Now, hopefully it isn't broken. Sometimes Grub2 will result. The result will be a broken boot. Wow. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? Pick Fedora and look what I get. Okay, I get everything else that I had before. Now I desperately want to be able to get to Fedora 3 because now I'm worried. Better not go into kernel panic. Good. No kernel panic. Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to mount my Mandriva partition. I'll be able to detect what those entries are just for Mandriva. I don't care about the other ones, so I was happy with them already. And then I'm going to change my Mandriva entry to read um, what it does, and then I'm going to update the master boot record quickly and move on. And yes, I'm a naughty boy. I have enabled root login to GNOME despite all the efforts. <laughs> okay. I guess I can explain now about what I was talking about earlier why you know, some of these things just kind of bug me. Now, one thing I find very odd about GNOME, and it's something that really isn't clear to the end user when you're, you know, when you set this thing up. Why is Linux Mint showing up? Why is the, win the one up there called OS, that's my Windows partition, why is that showing up? Why is SUSO showing up? Why is the system restore disk and Slackware showing up, but Mandriva is not? Well, okay. one thing I'm going to do, I am in here is root. Okay. So I am going to go, there's a system that's, hmm, hmm. Okay, I'm going to go into my home partition. Down here in this little goofy ass thing, you can get up to boot. And I'm, first I'm going to see if I have a Mandriva, yeah, there's a Mandriva directory. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to look to see whether I have in my file systems tab file. This here, not the one that would make sense, called file systems, um, is showing up. Now here, again, I do. For Mandriva, I have an entry here for... device SDA Mandriva riser and use defaults. I'm here is okay, so I'm gonna mount that. But why it's not showing up here even though I have the file system tab entry is beyond me. Okay, so it's already mounted, but it's not going to show up in my little computer box. Okay, that's fine. I can deal with that gnome. And up here, here's this little sassy Linux warning and all this kernel this, kernel that. Can't, can't get username for user ID minus one. What the hell that is? Okay, so let's go to root. There you are. There's a boot. There's a 
scrub. And there's my menu list. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go over to the top. And this is. I have to turn this into the Grub 1 language. And the Grub 2 language. But, um, and what's really odd, it just says the title is Linux. Now, so I've got, I'm hearing this to my entry down here, which is a little more descriptive. Boot VM Linux. UID 8C7, blah, blah, 26, blah, blah, VGA88, and boot in NITRD. So, by golly, because Mandriva doesn't name each kernel differently with a new number every time it does an update to the kernel, I actually can merely update my grub here and be able to boot into Mandriva and not have a problem. So that's what I'm going to do. So I inspected the menu list folder in Mandriva. I found that the, the entries that I have here in Fedora are exactly the same. So I am just going to use my handy instructions that I have here somewhere. did the hell and then you can't there's no back button must have you know I must have moved it okay there's two steps in um getting grub one to update it's not a big deal the result is when you do something for yourself it is always better when someone tries to do something for everybody in the world, you get a half-assed result, as you saw. In this situation, I have all the menu entries in here that I want, I've collected them, and now I'm just going to update grub. And in fact, to get into to grub, you have to type the word grub. Then you have to tell it From what partition are you in Grubbies? Are you actually going to install this menu list and/or Grub.com from Fedora to um, the master boot record? And I happen to know that Fedora is HD08 in Fedora Ease, so that's what I'm going to do. back with that. By golly, if I only remember what it was, I... I said grub install. Alright. So I gotta look this up. Set up HD0. <laughs> That's all I gotta do. Okay, set up HD0. Success! And just you quit. And you're done. So it's already, already recovered from that tragedy. You quit, log out, and makes you do all this extra crap. Then you have to go down here just to restart. And we hold our breath. And if everything went right, we won't see a Mandriva logo. We will see a Fedora logo. And we'll see all the entries that were there before. And we'll be able to 
boot into Mandriva and the damn thing will actually work. There it is. I've got it marked as 26315, but that may not be right. It doesn't match just the label. There we are. It does not have a kernel panic. So it's a two-step thing. First of all, you have to know what partition you're in. You have to translate that into grubbies. And then what you have to do is say set up HD0 if you only have one hard disk, et cetera, et cetera. And I am done. Network is up on interface. There's the IP address. Let's check and see. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the internet. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to mess around with anything in this. I think installing any kind of applications in here may be a problem. <coughs> Just for kicks and splits. Before I go home, I think I'll boot into Haiku. Why not? Because I can. This is the development version. Right now, printing doesn't seem to work. As you can see, <laughs> graphic user, and they've done a beautiful job. Again, they've done a very nice job of three um, creating what BOS was: the look, the feel, right down to the look of the way the, way the folders open up and things of that nature. I'm not saying this is the best operating system was ever created, but I mean an awfully nice desktop environment. If they were able to, if they were able to port over all of the apps that I have available to me in Linux by using Package Source, which is a feasible option, uh, especially at a repository level, this would quickly replace. Linux is a desktop because Linux really isn't going anywhere. Now it doesn't have any wine capabilities. So again, that's because uh, at least when I was trying to uh, set it up using package source, it said there was some kind of missing system call for X11. And of course, this isn't using X11, so don't know. So I'll stop here. I don't really, why do I care about the trash? Don't care about the trash. And I'll get out. Haiku's very, very fast.